In part one, I showed you the 1964 Sony CV2000 pre-production prototype video recorder being powered up for the first time in many decades. During that demo, the main AC motor stopped running. The cause was the failure of a part called the AC motor phasing capacitor. Tape recorders of the 1950s through the 1970s used a type of motor called a synchronous hysteresis motor. This type of motor rotates at a precise speed determined mostly by the AC line frequency and less by the AC line voltage, a very handy property if the design goal is to set the speed very accurately. Needless to say, the videotape recorder requires extremely tight speed tolerances. Note that the motor in this diagram has two coil windings. One of them I have labeled as zero degrees, the other as 90 degrees. This refers to the AC phase presented to the two windings. The zero degree winding is connected directly to the AC line. The 90 degree winding sees the AC after it has passed through the capacitor placed in series with it. This is called quadrature, a term that implies a 90 degree relationship between any two terms. The value of the capacitor was chosen that, in combination with the inductance and resistance of the windings, creates a quadrature relationship. The reason for this is simple. If you plot two sine waves in quadrature, you get a circle. More precisely in the case of a motor, you get a rotating magnetic field. The armature of the motor is literally dragged around in the field. The rotation speed of the magnetic field is exactly the same as the power line frequency. In this case, for the good old USA, it is 60 revolutions per second. But for this motor, two windings are used for each phase. This cuts the rotational speed in half, giving us 30 revolutions per second, which is 1800 RPM. These are the capacitors removed from the video quarter. As you can see, there is more than one of them. In fact, there are five capacitors. The two CAN type capacitors are dual capacitors, each with a 1.5 microfarad section and a 0.5 microfarad section. In addition, a 0.22 microfarad cap is present. It is this final capacitor that actually failed. To be safe, I replaced all of these parts with a single new capacitor rated at 2.2 microfarads, 275 volts AC. The reason for the multiple capacitors in the video quarter was to allow trimming the values to compensate for line frequency or line voltage variations. At this point, I now have the AC motor operating correctly once again. Now I will move on to making the scanner servo lockup. Due to a lack of documentation, it will be challenging to work out these details. This video quarter is significantly different than the final production model order is significantly different than the final production models. The AC motor drives the scanner with an oversized pulley and belt system. The belt is designed to slip slightly and a magnetic brake coil then applies a slight hold back to the scanner assembly, pulling the scanner speed down to the exact correct speed and phase. More about that in part three. Learn more at www.labguysworld.com.